Hello viewers from Zimbabwe and all over the world. My name is Costa Nkomo and welcome to the agenda on a Tuesday. This is New Zim TV. We are broadcasting live uh, in Harare uh, CBD. Uh, today, 17 November, everyone knows and is familiar about what happened three years ago, exactly in this month of November. It has become a very familiar month, uh, probably compared to the April 18, 1980, or even far more than the 18th of April 1980 because November 2017 marked the birth of the new dispensation, the Second Republic. And one of the prolific figures uh, during the birth of that uh, dispensation is ZANU-PF acting spokesman, Mr. Comrade Patrick Chinamasa. But Chinamasa, I want to welcome you to the agenda on a Tuesday. Thank you very much for inviting me to this interview. Let me just start by you uh, undisputably one of the people who played a very critical role towards the birth of the new dispensation. Uh, probably this is November 2017, the historic month in 40 years of Zimbabwe independence. What, what is so outstanding to you about this month? Well, it, it is, it, it's outstanding in that um, it was the month when there was a change of guard at State House. And the change of guard the activities leading to the change of guard had started maybe a week or so before and uh, everything went ahead very smoothly uh, there was no hiccup in the manner that the transfer of power was effected as you are aware the events leading to this day were primarily fueled by the activities of the former first lady and her cabal, the G40 cabal, who, taking advantage of the advancement in age of the former president, the former president who is now late, mm -hmm. uh, decided to, uh, to, 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 to usurp the constitutional powers of the president. And they were therefore rendering the uh, abusing the constitution and also rendering the governance of Zimbabwe uh, very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And as a result, as you are aware, the military took measures to bring this to the attention of the Zimbabwean public that uh, enough was enough and that uh, there have to be uh, far reaching changes, which in fact is what took place. Let, let me just ask something from you. You, you mentioned that the, it was a smooth transition, mm -hmm. but that involves others also fleeing from Zimbabwe through uh, 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 undesignated exit points, the likes of Sevia Kasukwere, Professor Jonathan Moy. So the, the smooth part of well, there was that no transition... Bloodshed. There was no bloodshed. But if it was smooth, these people shouldn't have run away. No, no, it was up to them. They should explain to all of us why they did to run away. Okay. You know, the, the guilty are always afraid. And I think that uh, Xavier Kasukwere, Jonathan Moyo, uh, Muzembi, Patrick Joao, we still also want to know why they ran away. But as you are aware, uh, Xavier Kasukwere came back and again decided to run away. So I cannot answer for them why they ran away. What I think I can say emphatically is that the transfer of power went very well. Okay. It was smooth, it's true, uh, there could have been one or two who may have, uh, whose interests may have been uh, affected adversely because of that change of guard, mm -hmm. but overall, I think all commented, they were out of their depth to describe what actually had happened, how to describe it, what was it? How come that something that was initiated by the party was taken over by the military, was taken over by the party? Because it is the party which took over the transfer of power. Mm -hmm. Everything was through the party. There was no coup. If no. it was, it <coughs> did not uh, take itself right to the end. Mm -hmm. but, but let me understand something from me. Uh, is the military intervention, was it constitutional in, in your view? Yes, in my view it was constitutional in the sense that the military are there to defend the constitution. Good. Yes, and I think they took reasonable steps 
to ensure that the constitution was defended. They didn't go overboard. If they had gone overboard like uh, taking over and becoming the government, that would have been another thing. Mm -hmm. But as you know, they did just that which was necessary mm -hmm. to ensure that the constitution is defended. You, because you, the constitution, like I pointed out to you, mm -hmm. the uh, G forty cabal and the former first lady mm -hmm. had and were busy usurping the power of the aging president. Mm -hmm. Something that was clearly unconstitutional. But you, you, you have a good, very good record in as far as law is concerned. And you have worked as, at, at one point as a Minister of Justice. And also as Attorney General. You, hey, yeah. As Attorney General for 11 years. And that background is not... Is Minister not, of Justice for 13 years. It, that's a, that, that's a long record. That background is, is, is not disputed. I agree. But there have been some contestations out there that says only the... Actually, it's the Constitution. It says the um, military chief... I mean, the commander-in-chief only mm -hmm. is the one who is supposed to deploy you, the military. In this case, Robert Mugabe didn't deploy. You, you, you know, I, I think let's leave that to scholars and mm -hmm. academics yeah. uh, to, to tell us exactly what they think, the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. If you have an aging president and the country is going to the dogs, mm -hmm. is going to uh, waste things mm -hmm. are likely to happen, mm -hmm. Uh, the question is, that comes to most reasonable people, what do you do? Do you allow a catastrophe to happen or do you prevent it? And I think what the military did was to prevent a catastrophe, which clearly it was going to happen. You cannot have people using their relationship with the president taking over. They were not elected. They had no constitutional or legal right to exercise the powers that they were now wielding. That was the issue. But as to the pros and cons, let's leave that to academics and to scholars. Okay. They will have a lot of PhDs that they can earn from studying the process that we had to go through. You, you and me are aware of what people are saying right now. In, in I don't know. I don't know. In, you in, tell in, me. In, in particular via social media. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some people actually, they were saying that they do regret I mean, that participation in the birth of the new dispensation. Do you I have not, share I've not, I've not heard of that. No, the, the where is that coming from? And where is the regret? Uh, particularly from your fellow colleagues. I mean, from your fellow opponents. The no, opposition, I, um, they are regretting participating in the what, November 2017 March. Yeah, well, why are they regretting? Why? What, what were the expectations? ZANU-PF was firmly in control. You understand? Mm -hmm. All the issues that arose were taking place within the framework of ZANU-PF. So the question you should ask them, if they were disappointed, if they participated, mm -hmm. what were their expectations? I want to know. Okay, let's look Maybe at we could d discuss that. Mm -hmm. What were the expectations? Maybe let's look at the generality of the people of Zimbabwe, the mm -hmm. livelihoods. Mm -hmm. Because of course I know why people supported, they were looking for something different uh, from Robert Mugabe to the a dispensation led by his excellent the president. Yes, and something different is, is, is happened. And like I pointed out to you earlier... Uh, in, of course, you are going to issue a comprehensive I, I'm, uh, We are going to deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. We are going to have to answer that issue. Uh, have things been different? Mm -hmm. Have there been achievements since the new dispensation came, uh, came, came on board? Those are issues that I'm going to address more substantively and comprehensively. It was the end of the year. So, so what, what do you think the, because we just want to close this section and then yeah. we move on. What do you think the Second Republic will be remembered for? No, the, those are the issues that I said I'm going to deal with comprehensively and substantively mm -hmm. towards the end of the year in my uh, press conferences. I wanted to dwell on that because there have been a lot of questions mm -hmm. and asked which we think as a part we need to answer. And I think that much of what the new dispensation has done is not broadcast or propagated sufficiently enough. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to take that opportunity to do so. Let's go back to the issues of the Gifford Kabao. Mm -hmm. Would you welcome them if they come back today? Are they going to be readmitted? Well, into the as process? you know, we passed a resolution, I think it was on the 19th, on Sunday, the 19th of November, if I'm not mistaken 
the Central Committee of ZANU PF passed resolutions actually. One resolution was that the former president must resign, must abdicate. That came from the party. And if he did not do so, the resolution specifically stated that the party would impeach him in parliament. That is very legal according to the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Another resolution which was passed by the Central Committee was that the former vice president who had been expelled, mm -hmm. Comrade Idim Nangagwa, should come back and become the acting leader of ZANU-PF pending a Congress. Mm -hmm. That also was another resolution. A third resolution was expelling those who had brought the party and country into disrepute. That is the G40 cabal. And they were all listed. They all know that if they should want to come back, they know the procedures that they must be followed. It's not up to Chinamasa or up to the president to decide who should come back to ZANU-PF and who should not. They know what the procedures which must be followed and it will be a collective decision whether or not they will be taken back into ZANU-PF. But, but do you think they can add value if they come today? I don't think so. I really don't think so. But, 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 they but, are very, should I say, disruptive elements. Should I say? Very disruptive elements. And, and I'll come to that. You know, uh, what the G40 did was basically to seek to destroy ZANU-PF by vandalizing and abusing ZANU-PF structures. When you pick out elected persons from their positions and you put people who are, who are, who are be, you know, beholden to you for no other reason but beholden to you, who have not been elected, that basically was the first step they were taking to destroy ZANU-PF. But as but, you know, but, we have internal democracy mm. within our party, and those who hold positions in ZANU-PF from the cell, mm. from the branch, from the district, from the province, we are all elected. But the the NPC Kasugweri decided on this project to destabilize the party, expelling people from their positions mm. and putting people who had not been elected. But recently we saw the party admitting, I mean, accepting some figures from the opposition. This is why I Tonga, say... Tonga, Tonga, so you this now why feel confident. Why I, this Do you feel I, confident this to work say, with people from the opposition? Well, I will have no problem. When they come, they become ordinary card-carrying members. You understand? Mm -hmm. And we'll monitor their behavior to see whether their behavior remains and continues to be aligned to the party policies and ideology. But, but so there is a lot of monitoring. We, we don't come, they don't come and we, you find them in positions of, uh, in, in various positions in the party. That does not happen. Mm -hmm. but, but, I mean, because the Let's question... Let's say, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. Comrade uh, Mutasa. He's one of those who had come out. He has come back, but he's an ordinary category member. Okay, ma'am, the, 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 the question was, do you feel confident to work with people from the opposition who come from the opposition than your fellow no, no, no. Who we, have already, been You cannot compare with people who are, whom are already working with. You cannot compare. We are already working with our people, our party people. How can you compare now to say I'm more confident with outsiders than with people I'm working with on a day-to-day -day basis? The question does not arise. No, I was asking. What you, what you should be asking is, mm. uh, can we give them positions when they come back? And the answer I give you is, when they come back, they become ordinary card-carrying members. Okay. And obviously, their progression within our party structures will depend on their behavior, mm -hmm. on their understanding of our ideology, and on the support of the people. Because ultimately, any position you hold in ZANU PF is an electable position. Let, let so, a lot at the end of the day, we will hear from the people what they have to say about the behavior of those who have recently joined us, whether from the opposition or from those we expelled who are previously members of ZANU PF. Let, let's look at the state of the ruling government party right now. Uh, what would you say is the most challenging 
thing the participants in? Well, the most challenging thing is arising from the activities of the G40 cabal. Are you afraid of them? No, no, no. We are not afraid of them. But the damage they left within our party is something that we have to make a lot of effort to reconstruct and to, to address. Like I said before, they d were keen on destroying party structures. Now, when you are an organization, a voluntary organization like we are, what makes us, are our party structures, once they are destroyed, once your cells, your branches, your districts are destroyed, we will have no leg to stand on. And that is the damage, the legacy that the G40 cabal left to ZANPF. So how, how long will it take we, for you to... We, we are to already this? getting somewhere. Already the election of the DCC is one organ that we are bringing back in order to address those issues of the vandalism that took place by the uh, against our structures by the G40 cabal. Are we going to see another camp in the ruling party? I don't like think what so. We saw in the I, I don't. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. This one was assisted by virtue of the fact that it was led by the former first lady, but it's, it's who point. was very close mm. to the aging president. At some point, the president, His Excellency uh, President Emerson Nangagwa, he said. There are some people from within who are targeting this position. He, he said so. I, I, th th that, that again, I suppose, is new enemies come, uh, become known. There will be, uh, should we say, they will be uh, expelled. So, I mean, would you... You, you cannot rule out always having people who are disgruntled within and amongst yourselves. So it happens in an organization, even within the church. It happens. But what is important is to keep constant your ideology, mm -hmm. to keep constant your policies. Mm -hmm. And those who feel they cannot be accommodated within the ideology, within the policies, can either decide by themselves to leave the organization. Or if we find them, we expel them. And we have done so recently, as you are aware. Mm -hmm. With Comrade Mike Chizema. Chizema. Yes, we've Someone. done so. Yes, we've done so recently. Mm -hmm. Those who don't tow, those who don't tow the party line, those who don't tow the party line will find themselves out of the fold. Mm. But are you confident yourself that these are the only two? Uh, well, no, no. To, to be honest, some there is no the serious problem within ZANPF in terms of our internal cohesion. As far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. there is no serious problem as far as we are concerned. We do get disagreements at lower levels. We do get disagreements, mm -hmm. but that is nothing to write home about. But, but what, what sort of disagreements that you have? No, 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 like a contestation for power. Anywhere where there is contestation for power, you are bound to have people who support this candidate, people who support the other candidate. Mm -hmm. And already you have a division. You understand? Mm -hmm. You understand. But over time, this is what the work of the our Ebed Chitepo School of Ideology is about, mm -hmm. is to be able to agree and uh, uh, make sure that we Im implement conflict management. Who, uh, who is eligible for this school? Can, can I also go and attend? Yeah, I know. In, in fact, we would want to open it up to journalists because we feel that the journalists also must have a, a, a view of Zimbabwe which is progressive. Mm -hmm. They must have a view of Zimbabwe which is progressive. They must report the truth. Where journalists are there 24 hours manufacturing, fabricating false news, fake news. Mm -hmm. It's not in the interest of the country. Mm -hmm. Even in the interest of the journalists themselves. Mm -hmm. Because they are violating their own journalist ethics. Mm -hmm. So we have in, in future we will have no problem having ideological programs geared for journalists for different professions. Because what we need to have in this country is a world view about Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. which can make Zimbabwe prosper, mm -hmm. remain united, mm -hmm. keep its cohesion, be able to know who is the enemy to Zimbabwe and who is not an enemy. And as far as we are concerned, we should have a critical mass of Zimbabweans who can say, come together, band together, 
to defend the country. Not necessarily from ZANU-PF, mm. but the issues which are fundamental to Zimbabwe, which every Zimbabwean must rally behind in order to defend this country. Let's look at something. We saw what happened in, the, in 2017. Should we say now the party has got a clear succession plan? It, it always is. There are two vice presidents, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Always, at any one time, there is no vacancy. Comrade Jim Nangagwa took over because he was vice president. Otherwise, the party would not even have suggested him or proposed him if he was a, 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 an ordinary card carry member. That would be most unusual. Do you see, unusual. A, do you see a situation where when President Nangagwa's two terms are expired, one of his deputies can take off? You know, let, let me not uh, project into the future. What I'm saying is, at any one time, mm -hmm. there will be two vice presidents. Mm -hmm. Two vice presidents. Right now, we have two vice presidents, Comrade uh, General Chwenga, retired General Chwenga, Comrade Mohadi. Mm -hmm. Come 2023, come our next Congress, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. We elect our president, Idim Nangagwa, to be our president. In terms of our constitution, he has the right to choose two vice presidents. But in, in your view, you understand? In, in, I don't in want, it's not a question of mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. What I'm saying is, at any one time, the succession plan is already there. But the if, the, if the president is not there, one of the vice president will take over. That is clear as daylight. I mean, and this is what happened. At least there is that president mm -hmm. in 2017. Mm -hmm. There were two vice presidents, as you know. In the gospel was on re-engagement. Mm -hmm. The re-engagement, of course, creating a new in our international relations with the other countries post Robert Mugabe. Mm. What efforts and approaches is your party putting in place right now to advance the international re-engagement agenda? Yeah, well, what I think uh, uh, you need to understand about re-engagement, it is assuming and presuming that there was disengagement. Mm -hmm. Now, the disengagement that took place came through the imposition of sanctions by uh, by Western countries, Europe, United States of America, white Commonwealth countries, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. So there was that disengagement why, why between you, why, governments. Why, why because of sanctions come? Yeah, because of the land reform. They did not support the land redistribution program. They mm. did not. So when they imposed sanctions, the intention was to collapse the economy and, be, and alienate the population from ZANU PF and therefore precipitate a crisis that will bring in new new gov government. Do you dispute that they didn't do, do you dispute that one of their grounds was that there is gross human rights violations? That, that is rubbish. Country. That is rubbish. I dismiss it with the contempt it deserves. Is primarily clearly the, the issue was to do with land redistribution program. They didn't support it. They still don't support it. But I'm sure that over time, they now recognize it is irreversible. They didn't support it. Mm. That was the basis. You, you, if you are saying, mm. by taking our land from the white minority, white settler community, that was a violation. Okay, on that basis, that's what their version of the stories. Mm. But on our part, mm -hmm. this country did not come on a platter. Mm. I have read the votes, the, the rights that we all enjoy, the right to vote, to basic human rights mm. did not come on a platter. I, I have read the, they the came about through protracted armed struggle. Mm. And the principal grievance in that struggle was land. Mm -hmm. Now, when we took it over, understandably, they would have been very disappointed. I, I have read the subject reports on elections. Um, I will give you an example of 2008, the, the 2002. And these subject reports indicate that there have been human rights violations prior or in the run-up to elections. Like but which you, ones? Maybe you can refresh my memory. You, which ones? You, I'll, I'll, like, okay, let's talk and, about and the also, don't always And also don't always take a, a, an organization which has just come in a week or two before election uh, and its opinion to be beyond reproach. No, what I'm talking about is subject report. Yes, yes, it's even mm. subject report. Mm. They are not always beyond reproach. They are not always beyond reproach. 
So they is their opinion. To but say, who has given them that opinion? You don't know. It's not subject to scrutiny or to interrogation. But it's their opinion. But overall, you must admit and accept that overall, we have been very democratic in this country mm -hmm. since independence. We have been conducting our elections on a very on a regular basis. We have been winning fairly, and everybody acknowledges that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is why we remain in power, and this is why we are going to remain in power until we fulfill the objectives of the liberation struggle, which was to get our land back. And people must not be uh, digressed by side issues, human rights, things like that, and so forth. Fundamentally, if we are not connected to our land, we are not a people. But for and for His Excellency has made that very clear. Yeah, of course. Yes, yes, yes. We have now been reunited, and there is no reversible, no reversing of the land redistribution program. That's what matters to you and I. So At the end of the day, the, the, the election and so forth, if we, we are on our land, the, they are much better handled. Not when we don't have land. Let, let, me, let, let me still look at the re-engagement agenda. Recently, you have actually point blank called the U.S. Ambassador, Brian Nichols, should I say thug, something like that. Does this language concern you in terms of a new dispensation that considers to improve relations with countries like the United States? No, we want elections, but not on the basis of falsehoods. If Brian, Ambassador Brian Nicholas, Nichols is doing diplomatic things. It's not in our interest to keep quiet. Like we have a right to tell him that he has no right to finance news media to say bad things or social media to say bad things against us. That is not an ambassador's job. Mm -hmm. An ambassador comes to improve relations. Mm -hmm. And so the worst thing that can happen when you're a victim is not having the right to say the truth. Mm -hmm. When Brian Nichols is prowling all over your, our country in a most undiplomatic manner and doing things which are intended to effect regime change, and then you ask me that I should keep quiet, is that fair on Zimbabweans? Is that fair on, on the country? Is, is there anything? At the very least, we should be able to tell him that what he's doing is wrong. And my comments were basically to tell him, frankly, that he was wrong. Is it's there, not a diplomatic it's, it's, activity to finance local opposition against there, the ruling party. Is there any way this is substantiated to say the yes, yes, we know. Yes, we know. Well, okay. But let, let's move on. He's and, not and disputing. He's not let, let's look at uh, the sanctions. This has been the song of quite for some time now to say they have affected this economy, but also you remember that there is the case of corruption. So if you are waving the two, which one do you think is carries more weight? You, you, you know the sanctions. I, to be honest, the the corruption issue is embedded in most societies. It's a matter of uh, whether you come to across it and you get rid of it. But generally, when you have a non-performing economy. It is a good cause of your corruption because people are running for resources which may not be there. Okay. When you have got a, a, an economy which is performing, mm -hmm. you get less of that. So ours is performing or is misperforming? It, it is, but under very difficult circumstances. And I'll show you why. So it's only good. And, and, and I'll show you why. Mm -hmm. We could fly in this country. This country has the potential to fly. Mm -hmm. The human resources, we have built it over the years, thanks mm -hmm. to the Zanpiv government. Mm -hmm. We have built human capital second to none on the continent. Mm -hmm. We have the resources. What we may need is capital, which has been affected very adversely mm -hmm. by the imposition of sanctions. And I'll show you why. We are a member, a shareholder, as a country, of the African Development Bank, World Bank, a subsidiary of World Bank, which is IFC, IMF, International Monetary Fund, mm -hmm. we are a shareholder. Mm -hmm. And as a shareholder, we are entitled to certain economic access, economic benefits, mm -hmm. which include 
from the World Bank, we can access soft loans to do our infrastructure, our roads, our power utilities, mm -hmm. and so forth. From IFC, which is a subsidiary of the World Bank, support to the private sector. In other words, our private sector, those who want to do manufacturing, agriculture, could be borrowing from IFC. From the IMF, we have a right to get balance of support, which other countries like Greece, they get billions of balance of support, support balance of payment support, when in fact they get into difficulties. From the African Development Bank, we also need development financing. Now, all that stopped in 2000 when sanctions were imposed against Zimbabwe. Now, sanctions also stigmatize the country. Even countries which would want to do business with us, they are afraid of the Western countries. They are afraid to deal with us because they have been threatened to say, if we see you doing business with Zimbabwe, we also ostracize you. Not by law, but de facto. I, you I, have no, also I, European I, I, Union. I do appreciate yes. the impact of sanctions. Yes, you on, should. On our economy. You should. Uh, but minus sanctions, mm -hmm. would you consider that if corruption had been arrested, surely our economy would be on a different level? No, no doubt. Any, any minimization of corruption will advance the cause of the economy. No doubt about that. So obviously, but, if it yeah. had been managed, we should be... But I, I don't know. The problem about corruption, about corruption, and I speak so as a former attorney general, mm -hmm. everybody talks about corruption and uh, against corruption. But no one comes forward as a witness to say, this is the corruption you must arrest with evidence. And that is where the problem of allegations of corruption is in this country. Let me ask you no something. one comes forward with mm. evidence. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Are you satisfied with the prosecution of uh, former cabinet ministers who were implicated in corruption, the likes of uh, Prince Kamfumira and um, uh, Honorable Moyo, to, 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 Moyo? To be honest... These people have been implicated in corruption. To, to, are you to, satisfied? To, to be honest, I will not give it because these matters are sub duties. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's not proper for me. I don't know what is in the hands of the prosecution. I don't know a anything mm -hmm. about the allegations, how serious, whether there is substance to the allegation. What I've said personally mm -hmm. in my previous and generally, mm -hmm. not just affecting former cabinet ministers or anyone involved in corruption is, corruption is a very complex crime. Mm -hmm. Because generally, to be committed, two people have benefited. Mm -hmm. And if they've all benefited, none of them may be prepared to give evidence against the other. So any evidence will only come if one of them thinks that he or she has been shortchanged. So I have been saying repeatedly in my weekly press briefings, it is important for law enforcement agencies not to arrest until they've carried out thorough investigation mm -hmm. to establish whether the crime has been committed or not. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the fear I have is people being arrested on no basis or before any investigations have been done and then only to discover that there is no evidence. It will do disrepute to the administration of justice. It's like already you knew they, are, uh, they were guilty, but you are releasing them. Mm -hmm. So my own advice to the Prosecutor General, to law enforcement agencies, to ZAC, is that they should never rush to arrest until they've carried out thorough investigations, which can stand up in a court of law. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, that is the test. Not what you think about me, not what you think about any of those who have been arrested. Mm. Let me ask you something differently. The, the, you, we, we all saw what happened at a couple of weeks ago. The, I mean, the attempt to smuggle six cages of gold by mm. the um, former um, uh, boss from the federations of upper mines mm -hmm. in Redar Shwai. What, what is your, your understanding of that thing, the linkages, and when people can, an individual can carry six cages of gold? Uh, again, I don't want to comment mm -hmm. uh, specifically. 
you're asking me to comment specifically. But do you think it's an this explicit is, case? Uh, first, firstly, I wanted to say, when you are talking about gold, uh, the general feeling is that there is rampant smuggling of gold. Mm -hmm. We should require that as government, we put in place systems and policies mm -hmm. that will minimize that smuggling. Right now we don't have you, you also, you know, you, you, the border, the border is a safe. Mm -hmm. Anyone can come out of Zimbabwe from anywhere. If in a law enforcement agency, where do you start? Mm -hmm. I mean, ju just think about it. Mm, let's, where do you some, start? let's talk about something different. You, you, we no, are no, no, but our, our on, on this one, I just wanted to, to say this, that what is important in my view is to set up formal structures in gold mining which can be made easily accountable. Mm -hmm. That clearly is not there right now. It's the moment that you have mining by artisanal miners, wherever they are, in their thousands. By the way, there are probably something like 400,000 mm -hmm. youngsters who are into gold mining and you don't know where they are. It becomes very difficult to monitor and to account for every gram that is mined through that process. So the system is just clumps. We need to improve on the system. Okay, let's talk about something different. I understand that your party is now seized with uh, the DCC elections. Yes. Uh, and um, uh, concurrently, the government has said it is not, um, it is not fit, it is not right for the country to have by-elections. You know, SEC should be conducting by-elections. A mm -hmm. lot of recalls have happened in parliament. Mm -hmm. How, uh, what measures have you put in place as a party to make sure that those people and your members who are participating in these DCC elections are safe from the deadly pandemic of the COVID-19? First, first, what you do not know, unlike the by-elections, our electoral college is very limited. The electoral college, which is going to vote in the by-election, in, in the DCC election, mm -hmm. our party structure, district party structures, mm -hmm we we'll total up to 120 mm -hmm. and we will come up with measures that will be able to separate them 40 40 40 when they vote mm -hmm. certainly we are able to contain and to comply rather to comply with the world health organization protocols something that is not possible when you've got thousands who are coming to vote voting is going to be at party district level mm -hmm. where there are only 120 people mm -hmm. and i think we'll come up with ways that will make those people vote while complying with world health organization protocols let, let me ask you something we saw that in the united states we cases actually millions over 11 million cases have mm -hmm. been reported and uh, over 240,000 people have died. That's the unfortunate part of it. No, uh, why, are you due, not, due, due, why are you not putting that issue? Due, due, the the due, death of the people. Due to COVID-19. But, but these people have conducted the elections. No, no, no. But first, you know, you compare apple to cheese. It's not right. United States of America is a huge economy. We are not. They've got the resources. They may not be complying with the World Health Organization. They may not be. But they are usual. They can put in place whatever they wanted to do, and they can risk without uh, eliciting much uh, negative publicity. They can risk so many deaths, which we cannot afford. It. Let me compare, okay, with your maybe people who are of the same level. Mm -hmm. In Tanzania, they had elections mm -hmm. just across the Limpopo in, in the south. They had elections. No, no, they no, are no. having to, elections. To, to, to be honest, I would not want to to make comments on those comparisons. Not, not, not now. Okay. So Please. let let me also Please. ask you something because we, we have to end this uh, this discussion, uh, Mr. Shinamasa. The civil servants. I mean, maybe before that, your party has been accused of interfering with um, politics in the opposition. That's rubbish. You utter rubbish. You are not in, in what way? In what way are we alleged to have interfered with their processes? They have been splitting without our help. True, we 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 reap the benefits of their divisions. Mm. But 
to say that we have fewer of that divisions is it's, it's wrong. But you know the history. Yeah, of you course. know the history. Yeah. The late Changirai violated his party's constitution by e appointing illegally two additional vice presidents, additional to the lawful one who had been elected to that position, mm -hmm. Kupe. Mm -hmm. He appointed Chamisa and um, uh, Mam Mutsuri. And Elias Mutsuri. Yeah, but that, Those that, were illegal. Mm. No, no, no. Mm. It has a history. Mm. Because when they start fighting, you must stress where it has come from. Mm. You understand? Now, the late Changirai passes on. And what happens? Mm -hmm. Instead of conducting a proper Congress to choose a leader among themselves, mm -hmm. what do they do? They start wanting to, to kill each other. But and we have got Shamisa mm. basically attempting to 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 to, to torch, uh, to ban, uh, to commit arson in order to kill Kupe. Now, people who come from that experience will obviously uh, feel very aggrieved, mm -hmm. but they are in the same part. Mm -hmm. So you can see the seeds of division mm -hmm. were already there. The seeds of splitting and infighting were created by themselves, uh, not the uh, Regardless of uh, uh, who belongs to who, MTC or Zanpia, but I'm sure the Zimbabwean people would want to see a united country. And sure. Of course, that, that also speaks about your relationship with the opposition. Right now, we've got two camps in the opposition. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. The one led by Kupe and the one by Chamisa. Mm -hmm. Which one do you feel comfortable to work with? To, to be honest, uh, let me say this. Uh, we want to work with any opposition which is patriotic to the country. Yeah, which one of the two right now is? Of the two, is? we cannot work with a, an opposition which is which is asking and f for imposition of sanctions, which is a, asking for extension of sanctions, which is asking for intensification of sanctions. Yeah, well, we you, cannot work well, with What that. do you say to people who say you your party favors Kupe? No, because no, no. She in has, terms of favor, she has, no. She has allowed, I mean, she has listened to the president who said losing political countries you know Kupe, into Kupe, and she has went let there. me say this Kupe is doing the honorable thing just like so what you are Matutu, comfortable to work with him. no 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 don't okay, we mean, will not work with them if you say work with them in government no we will not have them in government but we are saying we recognize them as an honorable opposition not one which is treasonous which is committing treason every other day by asking foreign aid forces to impose sanctions against their own people, against their own country. Mm -hmm. it's, it, is, it's, it, it, it cannot happen in the United States, as you know. Mm -hmm. It cannot. You can't, as a national of this country, go to UK, to Europe, to the United States, and lobby that, that those countries should impose sanctions against their own people and get away with it. And you say, you then come and say, let's work with it. What do you mean? Mr. Shinamasa, it was nice speaking to you. Can you just meet our viewers? We are in facing the okay. deadly pandemic of COVID-19. I thought I'd been and, meeting uh, them. <laughs> and uh, what is your message to them now, uh, regard, uh, considering what we are facing as a country, um, and also, um, among other issues, the economic challenges some people are facing? Yeah. So your you message know, on the, on the COVID issue, I'm a bit worried because there is some upsurge. When you look at the figures, there is an upsurge in new cases, mm -hmm. which means that as a people, we must comply with uh, the directives that our president has been uh, repeatedly giving, that we comply with the World Health Organization protocols. Let's keep social distancing. Let's wash our hands or sanitize our hands on a regular basis. Let's wear our masks. I, I think this pandemic is not yet over until a, a, a vaccine is discovered. And, and I think that overall, we want to thank His Excellency the President for the manner that they've conducted themselves. They've managed the response to COVID-19 to a point where I'm told where the rate which countries have been least affected, we have been rated very highly. We are now 138 uh, is of figures, maybe last week or two weeks ago, when United States is number one in terms of uh, the country which is baddest in terms of its response to COVID-19. Now that we must 
congratulate the president and keep supporting him so that he remains focused and make sure that people's lives, Zimbabwean lives, are protected. And in fact, he made the statement earlier, you remember, that it's better for the economy to suffer than for people to die. Because the economy, you can revive it when the opportunity comes. But when people die, you can't revive dead people. So I thought that was a very key message that he delivered. So let's follow his directions, let's follow his advice, let's follow the policies that he's pursuing so that we minimize deaths arising from COVID-19. With respect to the economy, it is important that as a country, we know that when you are developing an economy, it's not an overnight thing. It is a long drawn out affair. Over many, many years, it's not five years, it's not 10 years, His Excellency is targeted 2030 to be at a time when our economy will be upper middle income economy. But to get there, we need consistency in terms of policies. We need to take to arrive there step by step. And one of the issues that he's been addressing is the issue of infrastructure. If you have no infrastructure, you have no good road network, you have no energy, uh, 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 and so forth, you cannot get where he wants us to go. So it's important that the population is patient, that they continue supporting His Excellency the President, they continue supporting ZANU-PF, so that we can achieve our goal to make this country a prosperous country. And as I mentioned out earlier, we all now have a lot of the elements that are necessary for this country to industrialize, for this country to be number one on the continent. We, the elements are there. Human capital is second to none. In fact, we are benefiting even the more developed countries, Europe, United States, UK, Australia, they are benefiting from the human capital that we have put it together through our own meager resources. We have the natural resources in terms of minerals, in terms of agriculture. We all have those. What we now need as we go forward, which is why we are calling for the unconditional removal of sanctions, so that we have, like any other country, equal access to international capital. Because for the country to prosper, you need your human capital, you need uh, resources, you need uh, uh, technology. That also we can borrow. Technology we can borrow. But what we need is capital in order that we have all the elements put it together to make this country prosper. And I know we can do it and I'm confident that Zimbabweans will remain united what has made us withstand the sanctions has been nothing but unity by all people. And if we continue on that path of unity, there is no hurdle that we can overcome. When people ask about how we have survived 20 years of sanctions, people are surprised. But we have survived. Okay, we could have done more. But without access to capital, it means we are going to raise ourselves by our own bootstraps. That's what it means, which takes longer. Whereas if sanctions were removed and we have access to capital, is access to technology. This country, I want to assure Zimbabweans, this country has the potential to fly, literally fly. I think. Yeah, thank you so much for following us. We want to appreciate uh, Mr. Shinamasa for making time to come to our program. Uh, much appreciated and thank you uh, viewers from all over the world and in Zimbabwe in particular. Until next time, this is uh, News MTV, the agenda.